afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another riveting, exciting, amazing propaganda cast with me, your host, the one, the only master of propaganda off here to one versus one own crossing in the woods in the north. It's Captain S. Price. The one, the only, also in some regards, infamous Price fighting for the Wehrmacht, Germany, Deutschland, rolling out here with the 1 and 6th Panther Brigade, Feldherrn Halle in the south, it is Job, fighting for the Soviet Union, Socialism, Comrade Stalin, rolling out here with the 2nd Guards Mechanized Corps, we got encirclement, German infantry, and he goes straight for encirclement, hello. With infantry, or well, specifically Stormtrooper, Panther Gun of the Air, and Machine Gun Bulletins versus Job's Airborne, shock rifle, and guard motor. We'll have to see what he goes for there. Triple infantry for Job. Conscripts doubling Guineas here. Might be planning something earlier like Special Rifle Command or a support company. And this is the Special Rifle Command here versus the Wehrmacht. Interesting. Price here, by the way, going for a double MD42 build. Most likely, he will be skipping tier 1 to go straight into tier 2. And it's a bit of a strand he does like to operate with, particularly now I'm probably made easier when you don't you need the light to make a nice comedy because he relies a lot on, uh, with this strategy, Stormtroopers and Panzer Grenadiers. Specifically, he relies on the Panzer Grenadiers for the Panzer Tracks and the Stormtroopers for the MP40s. That way, sort of mixing things up that way. It was actually a strategy he operated with before the patch as well, but uh, it might just be working a bit more smoothly now post-patch. Triple MD42 there for Price. So again, he's going to be aiming sort of to aggressively control the field early on with the Pony. He's doing a bit of the pushing there in some ways. A bit more risky, but at the same time, done correctly. Can frustrate Jove here. Second comes on the way. They're noting and no penal troops or anything like that yet here for Jove. So, not entirely sure why he's going for the Special Rifle Command here. Pony is right by the country in the east in the east. Unable to fend off. As the MD42s move up here, steadily leapfrogging. With a third MD42, the MD42 will soon be encountering all of these MD42s. Points in these being seized, console laying down sandbags. Note the MD42 on the tripod was sort of more of a, yeah, again, heavier weapon. There were sort of more specific heavy weapons companies and platoons. It was sort of meant to back up the infantry during assaults. They're not much in that sense defensive weapons. In fact, during defensive fighting, they would usually remove the machine gun from the tripod and use it on a bipod since that way it could react better to what's going on. They were basically against those set up. They had good range and all that, so they meant to support infantry during an attack, but just blasting away from far away. I think they had like two kilometers worth of range or something like that on the tripod. So a little fun fact there about the MG42. Pioneers here, we got Tegger there for Price and going for a bunker there as well. Nice little timing there. Scout car here for Joe. Obviously in this regard there's a bit of a particular weakness in Price strategy at the moment, which is with only MG42s and Pioneers, he is very vulnerable to a scout car. And that's probably why I went for the bullets in here, tougher meat on the MG42s to slightly increase the penetration so they could theoretically slightly better deal with the M301, even then it's a bit of a long shot here, but it's probably here again the price is aware of this, and I imagine again Joe Tink's is aware of Price's Valmark strategy, so again it's setting up for what he figures is one of the counters, which is just scout cars. More counters there for Job and the Red Army, and certainly the fact he's not going for any penal troops would seem to indicate again he's kind of got Price figure in this department. Here the engineers are sort of trying to stall, occupy Price for a long enough time here. A bit risk in some ways losing the engineers, of course not a massive loss, but in the end it is a minor loss here versus Price. We'll see what happens there, scout rushing force there, Pani is in the way. MD4 to the trying to react, and we got the third Conscript out there for Job and the second Guards Mechanized Score. We got Conscript up the eastern side. Pioneers getting blasted up close now, MD4 to open here. Against Gunnips, it's actually doing quite a bit of damage to the scout car there. Thanks to the bullets in there, so again, Price has this strategy uh, rather down a lot. It's one he's been working a lot with as the Wehrmacht. Nothing further here for Joe. As for Price, the tech up is done. He can begin going for Pentagon, it is now, and likely will in a few moments. Well, obviously, he actually builds any of the early buildings made so far. He's got nothing there. No infantry company. No like to make a nice company. We got, oh, I like to make a nice nice company. And we got the country coming out there just for some reason. The name there again is just a mix of English and German. For some reason, the sort of, shall I say, uh, rhythm of it slightly from me off again. They have sort of slightly different tunes. Or tones, anyways. Panzer are going to be in the way there for price. And it's going to flash up as well, which of course benefits his machine guns. But also, Panzer are going for example. They can also work quite nicely with it. Scout car charge falls just the machine gun moves. So that's a pretty bad timing there for Price. Great timing there by Joe, though. That's going to be bad news then. Price is forced to treat the machine gun. Punts are going to do squat there, there for Price. Sam X here by the center victory point. So, first, Punts are going to do squat there, ready with the Sturmgewehr 44. Scout coming about here for Joe, looking for targets. Price so far is losing map control rapidly here. 
And we do get a light to make an comedy up. Probably going to go for some light vehicles to back things up. Maybe also some pack 40s. We'll have to see what it ends up with though for price. Panzer Gunnady is setting out. Not quite there yet for Panzer Shrek. Though probably initially he's going to have to use them for infantry since his allies got nothing there. Jove gaining a fat chunk of the map here and saying that can highlight a bit the weakness of this strategy and with the MD42s and bulletins all there. He cancelled the struggle with the light vehicles but also just has very little infantry meaning because MD42s can't be you know, played too aggressively and they're sort of fumbling about in the dark a bit blindly so. Well obviously I mean for all this if a price is going to be about you're stalling and then sort of building up a more larger force with sufficient infantry down the road of course considering he's relying a lot more on elite infantry some of it Doctrinal, it's going to be much harder here for Price to get into gears. Of course, once it gears up, the strategy is going to be much harder to deal with here for uh, Joe. We got the shock rifle frontline tactics here ready for Joe. So there'll be shock troopers, KB8s, and IS2s here. Comes being hounded there by the MD42. Two to two on the way. That probably helped deal with the scout, kind of put pressure there on uh, Joe's infantry. All the way in 31 and they're going for the MD42. Two to two almost done. Bit of quiet here. MD42 they're setting up. And there we go, 2-2, two two. like the Panzer Spear Wagner, F for Price, and the 106th Panzer Brigade, Panzer Gunnady moving eastwards. And then we see a clash here around the center, 2-2 two two moving in, and there you go, and one charging force, and there we go, heavy auto cannon fire, they're piercing the side armor. Joe's crew quickly backpedals out of that one. Noting he does have anti-tank grenades ready as well here, obviously anticipating a likely counter, which is 2-2 two two in the, or the scout counter form of the 2-2 two two there. Nice play there by Joe. Well, Kranz they're going to like try and take it out. They're probably going to have to enforce it to cover it up. or set up the MD42 at the very least for that purpose. Punt's going to need to rush in there. He's obviously got sprint for them, so he can quickly get them in there if it comes down to it. If he wants to. And we've got MD42 opening up here. Price to has now with the 2-2 and the Pentagon. He's gained a fat chunk of the map here away from Job, and it's now opening up the fuel flow for himself soon enough. Very good. So, Joe still that holds most of the map. He's still also got a small victory point lead here, and we got more Panzer Grenadier here for Price. He can't even get Stormtroopers out at the moment, so he's a bit short there. Pro Joe there taking up with the tank of command, Battalion Command. MD42 they're holding up. Need to fix up the 2 2 2, and there you go. Council going there for the cutoff point there. Panzer Grenadier almost done. And there you go. Scout cover right in front of the MD42, taking a bit of damage. He also feeling the experience, which is. Bit dangerous if he gains fits and then pops them sending him up his rounds. So that could quickly result in the uh, loss them. In this case, so the scout car is doing a lot of damage. And there you go, pops them sending him up his rounds. Joe gets out there, but just in time. And South Pants is holding up the conscripts there steadily. Shock troopers quickly called in here by Joe to put pressure there on Price, but he's not likely going to go for the T70. Pants are going to need a squad wing, only 40 minutes to defend the car. Find there, a bit of a weak spot there, which Joe quickly sniffed out. And there you go, T7 light tank on the way there for Job and the Red Army. Conscripts out by the Panzer going to deal it. Firmly fighting for the fatherland. Comes there, push back with the 2-2-2. Pioneers moving up there. Sprint in there for Price to move them about just a tad faster. T7 in there, almost done. There we go, we got Stormtroopers out here for Price. Adding the MP40s, the Schmeisers. Engineers sending out, got Martin on the road. 2, two moving in. Not a bad idea at all, of course, makes time for the music. Infantry or move vehicles about freely, and there you go mine there as well. Good work by Job. Now scout car sitting in the right flank, hitting the info 2 there. Nice play there by Job. Quickly out of price there. No sign of Panzer effects yet, and he will definitely need them because I mean, with the strategy he's currently operating, they're probably going to be one of his main counters to it. It tends to be. So he's going to have to go for it soon. Shock to results out here for Job to put further price there, on, pressure on Price's infantry. Still trimming a bit around there, around there, doing damage. Noting I don't think we've seen any mines from Price on the other hand as of yet. MD42 coming in the center, grabbing the western munitions point. Back here, troops are reinforcing for price. 2 2 hauling back. We got the Panzer Grenadier moving forwards. And back here, troops are reinforcing as well. Bit of quiet here. No Panzer Strix yet. Big push here by Joe into the east side there. Lots of infantry, of course, backed up by light vehicles in the west. There's a single unit holding potentially up price, and even then, not for long. And there go T7 moving ahead here. Panzer Vex are being upgraded now, so you can see there's been a big munitions drop here. There seems to be in the unit retreating, that's getting it. In the west here, single conscript, there versus Panzer going to be MD42. Note here, the stormtroopers moving up here. Could hit on the flank as well there. He probably doesn't know the conscripts were there, but he will now. And might be able to hit there with a tactical advance at the right time. That's clearly setting up for their convoy taking him down. So there he goes, going to pop it. Yep. 
It's going to go ahead for an attempted white and put him with the neck to cover their crossing three on retreat. There's a good chance of getting a white P and... Oh, close one there, but not quite. Scout coming in here. T7 moving westwards as well. They need to pantry up. Their pants are all taking heavy damage. Things are getting pretty dicey here. MG4 in the center holding up against the T-70 shock troopers. Scout comes almost down to the sheer bullet fire here that's being laid down. But the storm troopers and the Panzer are taking heavy damage in the process. Almost getting rubbed up. 2 2 moving to the center here. Panzer are going to be sending out there for Price. Intense fighting here in the center and the west. He's out there. It's being slowly gobbled up there by Job and the Red Army once more. MG4 moving towards the center to stall up. Joe there again at least attempt to. Panzer is retreating since one T-70 could quickly wipe them out now. So he just makes the right decision and gets out of there fast. No sign of further takeover there for Price. We got Stormtrooper squad up number two. So that means two Panzer Grenadiers, two Stormtroopers. Panzer gets the note. He's using Sprint to quickly get in there. Most of the rockets miss. In fact, all of them miss. Two to in there to hit the flank. Stormtroopers they ground the fuel point. At least the 22. Though note that Scout to cut heavy cover. There's a bit of a trap there since they can't actually stand on and grab the point. T7, they're falling back in the face of the Panzer and the 2 2. Shock troops moving in to push them back. Very nice. Troops are healing the enforcing. So far, careful done between Job and Price here. 2 2 close to Veteran 2 here. Troops healing the enforcing. Briefly considering a sniper, decide, looks like Job decides against it. Perhaps figuring it might be a bit too much of a risk back here. Troops healing the enforcing still for Price. Might see another pantry trick. There we go, going up. That way you can just begin unloading volumes of rockets there against Joe's vehicles. And it'll be interesting to see how Joe handles such a pantry trick heavy strand. You've certainly seen bits here and there where less experienced players struggle with a lot of pantry tricks. So, you know, Joe being a highly ranked player might provide us with some answers to how to potentially deal with it. Or, you know, get snooped. We'll have to see. Anyway, we've got Storm there with the conscripts up close. Nice use of the ambush. They basically waited for the comps to rush up close and then he took them out there. Nice play there by Price. Good use of Storm He's got M4 to those conscripts in the east as well. Almost getting another wipe. Can he this time finish off the retreating and running conscripts? And there you go. A wipe against Jove. Bit of a small tactical win here by Price. Though he's still struck map control and he's certainly a bit behind the victory points. More structures out for Jove to counter the Storm Troopers and the Panzer Grenadier. Heavily armed assault infantry, which to put Price's men below. Well, the dirt. Still, Joe here has one massive advantage in the fuel, and that's going to be one of Price's big risks. He just needs to catch up and then begin bringing up armor of his own. Otherwise, he risks getting stomped pretty hard here by Joe. Since Joe's late game, it's likely going to involve IS-2s. In theory, he can go for the KV-8, though. It's not exactly a common uh, counter. Or choice at all. Pushing these to you. Quick grenade here. Storm shock troops could get wiped out here. Then again... I mean, even with the Panzer, I mean, the four squads, I mean, they take two squads with even with the Panzer, that means they start roughly have the firepower single Panzer to squad together. But no, it looks like the shots get away. They're pretty lucky there for Joe to do with the T-70 here, which is so far managed to dodge most of Price's rockets. Big two points here, so they're going for decent fuel point. Very good. Intense fight here on crossing the woods between these two highly ranked players. Panzer is moving about there with their Raketa and Panzer Buxer. Stormtroopers moving up. Nope, the way he's very commonly moving about there with hold far least when they get into sort of more hostile territory. Basically, once you hope to bait in the opponent, sort of shoot them out. Of course, if he doesn't, he forgets about them. He can end up just not shooting back at all. I still like what he's doing there. Go smoke screen off. More stormtroopers out here. We've got tri triple stormtroopers out here for price plus double panzer checks. That's a lot. And we got take a bit for price finally. Very good, so good. Job here going for sniper. Apparently he can't quite decide, but decides he wants it in the end. He wants the sniper. He believes in the sniper. This time around, the stormtroopers do manage to grab the point. And again, with that car, it ends up they usually sort of hug it too close. They can't grab the point. But again, this is slight edge. When well, theory can actually hold the car and grab the point. There goes he's moving in here. Smoking down the very quick response to the price. She's immediately popping a smoke grenade on the T-Sin right to get close enough and then retreats. Expertly timed there by Price. Very nice save. But there you go, Joe setting up here for an aggressive flank with the shock troopers. Gonna figure he can sort of hit around here. But Price may not be quite as ready for a lot of shock troopers. And it actually looks to be almost the case. We've got Storm on the flank. A lot of them, in fact, in the ambush. MB4 you know, today might have to get in the 2 2 to deal with it. But there you go. Concentrate on the other flank. And still got the Storm supporting as well there. Shock troopers out there versus Storm in the negative cover there. Storm troopers are doing enough damage here. Getting the initial drop. But there you go, grenade off. Storm troopers almost right here. But the shock troopers need to get their own in action. 2 2 dealing up there. Another assault here from the front. But there you go. MG4 troops versus those. Got smoke screen off here to back up this on. There you go. Stormtroopers with the tactical advance on the right flank. 
Nice end for the action here between Joe and Price in the center. Then Denise Ming Fort has the conscript retreat in the face of the MD-42. Joe does not believe in, you know, suppression from the enemy. It seems. Price taking begins to build the support McCoy could try and go straight for the heavy panzer core with this. That would definitely be bold, but Price is nothing if bold and very, very cheeky. More mines down there from Joe. There goes Snipe beginning to engage at the MD-42. Nice play there. Definitely punishes Price. Definitely need around for too long there without any ambush camouflage. Though, of course, with encirclement, ambush MD-42s can actually deal with snipers. If you said I'm not correct, then your pony doesn't expect it. It's personally my favorite way of dealing with snipers. That's ambush MD-42s. So ambush Vickers, actually. If you can grab a Vickers machine gun and give it ambush camouflage, it's a really solid kind of a sniper. It can really kill them fast. Oh, hits the mine there. Nice work there again by Joe with those mines. Nice work. Back here, no further tech up, no support McCall either. Might be, of course, he's a bit too preoccupied. And there you go. Two to two down, a bit of a blow there to Price and the German army. Oh, he's going to ambush the snow with the stormtroopers, and he gets it. That was beautiful there by Price. Creeping up as close as possible. And then the sniper there, clearly not anticipating it, just got gunned down. Nice work there by Price. I'm sure Joe may not appreciate just as much. So, Homer Cop there for Price is going to be pushing for Panzers, maybe an Ostwind. Punchy eggs and Suffolk's here. Strain to mine. Yikes. Joe, meanwhile, they're pushing for this mechanized armor company here. I think you need spotted by the MG42 and uh, being fed here as well by Stormtroopers. He's definitely got Stormtroopers all over the place and they're definitely doing some reasonably good work here and there versus Jove. And again, note, he is very particular about always trying to set them to cover. It's always trying to creep them up on the end and get them into effective range. That's not really something you see from a lot of players. And again, I know when we've seen some of Price's other play, when you're, for example, with Forge Storm, where he blobs a lot, we sort of tend to forget. But Price is also capable of, you know, these really, really sneaky tactics. I mean, he's not just all blob. I mean, if you can't go with blobbing, he will do. But as you can see there, he also knows how to handle his infantry. And again, it's sort of hard as, again, one of my points with this, you know, I mean, if you begin blobbing, he just oh, drags you down, but he just you know, trying to stick to better play. You also make better plays. You can see a Price can do some really sneaky stuff with those Stormtroopers. Again, he's trying to you know, creep them out there. He's trying to consistently ambush, and there he goes, sprinting. Ambush out there. I mean, just look at that. You'd think he was playing Commandos. And not Campaneers, too. You know, that old sneaky game there. I was never good at it myself, but I know several friends there who are absolutely adore the game. Anyways, there's Shock Troopers pushed back here by... Price's commando stormtrooper assault. Good lord. Shock was moving in there. Joe right now, by the way, on the back foot here. As Price's commando tactics of stormtrooper attack, maybe we want to call them, just completely confounds them. And of course, stormtrooper attacks is also involved by way infiltrating, getting close to the enemy, surprise them, and then hosing them with whatever was at hand. So, you know. Very nice work there. Seems like it was just a flash outside. Anyway, 74 to with the conscripts. Grabbing the point here. Panzer on the way there for Price. Panzer Kampfwagen Fear. Scout coming up the right on flank and the MD42. Nice play there by Joe, but he's still in a sticky spot there. I mean, the nice to do some time off. Panzer on the way there, slowly. So we'll have to see what Joe goes for next. I mean, he's going for field guns, so he's obviously a bit sort of shorthand versus armor. He's altered to. There you go. Tactical advances again. Very nice play there again. Just really good use of the Stormtrooper there by Price. Thumbs up. Consuming Westwards here for Job, noting by the way they have been upgraded here with the mobile reserves ability, which A gives them seven men, and also applies a few other smaller bonuses, I believe. Basically they get better rate of fire and cover. And they also uh, gain veterans who faster, so you can sort of be used to sort of quickly make up for loss that way. Gotta up then one of Price's Stormtrooper squads. That scout combo has lasted quite a long time there, which is you know really nice work there by Job. But there you go. Panzer Vart here for Price and the 106th Panzer Brigade fell down a MG4 to the about to get hit on the flank. They likely will be in uh, hotly pursued here by the Panzer Fort. And of course, Joe's not quite where it's there. And there you go. Direct hit, wiping out the engineers as well. Double kill there. And there you go. Field gun to the rescue there, piercing the rear armor of the Panzer Fort. Nice play there. Make two points. Weiss is 437 versus 11 Price is definitely. Gotten ahead of Jovi in terms of victory points. And we got a KV-8 here from Jovi. Not really what you expect, but he's going for the KV-8. Probably to help deal with all the infantry. And interestingly, is it then accounted as the 
you know, the Panzerjäger Jaeger hordes here, the price of going back, going to the KD. I mean, that'd be very interesting if it was the case, and, you know, it's only big thumbs up there to Joe, but that's actually the case, there's, and I imagine he's the one that figured it out. Panzer four, 4 there, they're striking, hammering away there at the interior of the house, Panzer Jaeger's moving up there, basically use them to, you know, back up the tank in case of any armored surprise, they can just quickly hose whatever tries to get close, following up with the Stug here. I mean, he's probably figured out his opponent's going for shot rifle, so he's also guarding himself up against the potential eyes too. Or anything else, but there you go. Artillery field fire there against the Panzer Jaeger. Got a hit on the Panzer Force Wolf down to half health. Shock was there with him nabbing the flamethrower and then getting out of there. And there we go. We got the KBI flamethrower tank out here for Jove. Again, it's not something you see very often at all, but here we are with Jove. He's going for it, and it seems like Zach's going straight for the Panzerjägers with it, so it's going to be interesting to see how that fares between the two. Which one's out? Four Panzer Shreks, or KB8 with the flamethrower. There we go, he neatly retreats. In fact, in the face of this. Interesting. Though the field gun threatening to bow, I might also have a hand in it, who knows, but all the way though. Got him pushed away there. We got a Sturm should stay out for guard here for Price in the center, mine goes off, killing some Storm was there. He has not replaced the third Stormtrooper squad that perished in the fight against socialism. Back here, Shock Troopers ready to go again. We got more engineers out to have repair with armor, obviously, and perhaps they've done some more mines. We have with the KV-8 here. Joe is feeling bullish with it. He's going to try and cause as much harm there to Price. And there you go, MG-42 routed by the KV-8. Scorching horribly. Stug moving in there. Going to try and land some hits there. Not a bad move there by Price. Though, of course, he needs to ensure he can get it out there in case things get hot. And I mean, you know, more than flame for hot, but you know, anti tank gun hot. Directly down the Stug, and before doing with the shock troopers, trying to push ahead there. And routing them. Panzer 4 being slowly fixed up, troops healing and forcing, need to get them moving again. We got 437 versus 230, shock troopers going for the center victory point, and there you go. MD4 to keep them occupied, and then the storm troopers hit there with a sprint flank. Nice play there, we go, tactical advance point blank against the shock troopers. Really nice over there by Price. Picks up the KV-2, or KV-8 there as fast as possible, laying down mines by the munitions point. Now the field had to deal with a Price's armoured build-up. And they're going to take the munitions for the man to grab, they managed to secure it for the Red Army. Back here, troops have been forcing. Back here for Price, nothing further happening. He could go for more Stugs, he could go for the Ospin, could set up for a Panzer IV. We could try and go for the heavy Panzer Corps. Nurse Guard Price has several options now available to him. Another option by B is to hit this point and then close the pocket. Soon though, not right now, but you, know, you could try you know, hit the point here later on and then close the pocket if Joe keeps sort of positioning stuff here and then destroy it. Or at least disrupt uh, Joe's position enough to destroy him with a larger counterattack. Now the Stu got there for Price. He's definitely worried about the armor. In a sense, no, realizing his Panzerjägers may not quite be enough, he's bringing up Stugs to deal with it. Other country squad, by the way. Uh, both squads have been upgraded, but the one has not been fully reinforced. Let's see there, they get the bonus when he cover. Also, that little sign there that indicates they get it. Ambushing field guns as well, very sneaky. Storms was out there. There's a lot of ambush warfare going on though. I feel like Price could add a bit more to his men and machine guns. He's really only using that on the Storm to innately have it, rather than also on his machine guns and Panzer Eagles and whatnot. Kept moving ahead there you go, catching the machine gun there. But there you go, Panzer Eagles going for it. Going straight from here with the KV taking heavy down, still burning through the Panzer Eagles rapidly, down to less than half health already. Field gun backing up here. Mine goes off, causing Incredible casualties there amongst the Panzer Jaegers. Nice bait there by Jove. Panzer down to half health shocks. We're taking lunch with the KS. Push forward here. Under cover of all the other stuff going on. The machine gun push back here as well. And Panzer Four goes down to the double field guns. Nice work there. Nice bait there by Jove. Basically baiting Price into thinking he's got an opportunity there to take out the KV and then hitting him with the ambush field guns. Two thumbs up there to Jove. Bit risky there, of course. Had it not gone right, he could have lost the KV8, which would have left him a bit in a sore spot. But in this case, paid off nicely. Third storm to squad out here for Price again. Nothing further in terms of armor or tech up. Of course, still got the two Stugs. But he's now shot a Panzer IV. I mean, again, one now option would be just hit this point, close the pocket. It's it's a really powerful ability at the right time, and not players. Some players just get absolutely freaked out over it because they really do not like it. Like they generally hate it. So in this regard, I mean, 
clever use of close to the park here could have proved decisive versus Joe, but Orinara's moving up here, which means, you know, on the road here, he tends to cut off, which means it's going to be less effective when always moving away there. But still, I feel like he could have rushed in and, you know, done some heavy damage to Joe, but, you know, that's just me. Stug's standing for two sitting up. Pushing forwards there, Pioneers need to retreat. There we go, big push with the shock troops, but they caught by the storm to his own punch. He got the shoot tank back, got Dog Fields moving up. Bit of a tiller here would be nice for Price. But uh, sadly, he doesn't have that. No mortars, no punch of air force. There go, charging forwards, walled infantry past the KVA, going for the field guns with the storm troopers, ignoring the scorching hot fires which the KVA are just spewing out like a socialist dragon. Comrade Smoke. Anyways. Stug down into the field guns. To feel, I mean, again, like the balance change there, probably not done a lot there. Like making it slightly smaller. No difference. Again, rotation. No difference. I mean, they didn't really fix what was necessary about the Stug. Anyway, Stormtroopers punches his moving head. The field guns being routed. Back here, troops him reinforcing. KV at the pulling back for repairs. Ooh, got a wipe then the field gun destroyed. Not too bad there for Price and then. Still took some heavier casualties there. In terms of the Stugs. Still was able to push through there with Jove. We'll have to see what Jove goes for next. Might look like he's in here for a nice turn now. So there's a bit going on there. Troops are healing and forcing. Another Stug there for Price. Again, at this point, I suspect, again, Price is basically hedging his bet versus the IS-2 and also to help deal with the KVA. Storms was hit. Oh, Pants going to DS versus the Conscripts. Rockets and assault rifle fire their flame. Got Molotovs all within the Panzer Jaegers, causing quite a bit of harm there. And of course, upgraded versus Panzer Jaegers, the country have to do a good chance of versus them. So, in this regard, price and strategy is all to begin to run into a few issues as the game goes on longer. Stomp to be in a hold off for the country there. The country, I'm not entirely sure aware of it. They, they just send some things there. Can you see anything, Petro? Nyet, come at the outlaw. Why don't you go out there? Troops seeing there. Stug almost done there for Price. Lots of rockets. MB4 setting up. That's going to get rushed here by Molotov, I think. Joe, they're slowly approaching the IS-2. And there you go. Bun grenade here from the Panzeragus. I mean, right now, potentially, got movie again to sneak up, hit these two points, and then close the pocket. I mean, again, he's got a lot of munitions. I mean, even just using close the pocket without anything cut off could still be useful with its uh, light mortar support there in the frontline sectors. Stu there was a shock troopers. Stu being fixed up. MD4 sitting up as well here. Stormtroopers slightly moving out here. KV8 moving out here for Job. And there you go. Shock troopers. Oh, nice grenade against the stormtroopers. Pushing the way here with the second wave of shock troopers falling out here. KV8 being with a machine gun in the west. And that's, I think, going to be wiped here against Price. Was clearly not ready for that KV8 moving in. Stukes moving up there, but without pinning my machine guns, in, I mean, come on, Price, at least add some machine guns on them. I mean, the machine guns do add a bit of firepower. There goes going for the KV8 here with the Stukes. Joe's not far off from the eyes, too. There goes the the info too close one there. The troops are enforcing. Shot one, storm to the squad as well here. Close the pocket here would be amazing, you know. Get a uh, break supply line in, then pop close the pocket. I think we'll do some heavy damage there to Joe. Come on, Price. Close the pocket. You know you want to. You desire it. And his case going straight for the Stooks. Got the ice shot here for Joe. That's going to be further problems here for Price. Was already struggling here to deal with the KV-8 on his own. Back up at the field guns. There we go. Pantagas flanking in there. It's going to go for it. At least they're going to attempt to. There we go. Lots of fire, but some of them failed to penetrate. And even then, again, due to the KV-8 ability to negate some of the damage it takes, it can still absorb a lot of hits there. Got the Ice 2 rolling forward here for Jove. No pinlock -like machine added to that one. Brutal stuff here. Troops healing enforcing. Prize is holding on, but it's certainly looking a bit bleaker. Here we got the Ice 2 moving forward here. Great hits down the Stoogs. Shots fired. Dukes have yet to hit veteran to one, which is a bit unfortunate. 
Joe though's charging straight after them. He doesn't care. He's not afraid. Stuke shoots, misses. Pantyag's going up here. Gains some hits in there, very good. Stuk shoots, gains veterans one, the ice two takes a hit. More Pantagas then gaining the ice two, they're doing more damage with the rockets. Ice two high tailing out of there. Down to less than half health here. Less than a quarter of health field gun, they're ambushing there. And sneaky Jove. They're very sneaky Jove. Price has got the victory point lead, but now his forces have taken an absolute battering there. And Joe certainly feels more in the control of the battlefield than ever. Field guns there hiding about there, slightly moving about there. Joe's showing he can also sneak his stuff about there. It's not just Price. Fixing up the KV8 there, very close to actually two, pulling back the eyes too there. But still benefit from machine gun, and certainly so with the Stoogs. More pioneers there for Price that repairs Sturm Very nice work there. And there you go, machine gun finally napped here by Joe. Stomps from the head here. Ready for Second pioneer squad there ready. Definitely not a fan of this mission, but he could also lead down March when he had more of the map. That would also have been great, but you know, still, I feel like, you know, well positioned, close to the pocket, could maybe at the right time to turn around now. It's maybe a bit hard. Not impossible, though. If you can somehow bait Joe into a push here. Like in this sort of cut off the right points and then the cut to the pocket. There might be a chance here that Price could still turn this around with a well timed close to the pocket, but it's going to be requiring, I think, some uh, absolutely Manstein level of strategy to pull that one off. So, does have Price have it in him, the mind of Manstein? Or is it uh, someone else? Stomp to swing out here, half eight of X23, proving ahead with the field guns. Machine gun counter setting out. Fixing up the Stoogs. Storm troops rolling about here in the west by the southern field point. 322 west on a 52. We definitely got to build up here. Like something's about to happen. Like a you know, crack of thunder. I know it's about to sort of hit off. More punch guns here for Price. It's going to probably be more punch tricks. Hoping they can somehow turn the tide that way. Pioneer spotted here trying to push eastwards. Got a counter spot there holding up nicely in heavy cover. Stoops still not being upgraded. Looks like Joe's ready to make the first move here against Price. We've got Storms the hiding about there. But insufficient anti tank support nearby. we got the punch eggs nearby. Though this time they have been ambushed up. Machine guns though have not. Stukes on the move here. The final battle is about to happen, I think. Ominous thunder crack in the background there, guys. Who's charging forwards? Every single, almost every single Panzerjet rocket either misses or fails to pe hit penetrate. Oh dear, Panzerjets! They're being annihilated. Catastrophic casualty for Price. All of his Panzerjet is dead in a single moment. Shocked was hitting the side. They're clearing out the machine gun as well there. Almost got the KV-8, but the IS-2 now the bigger problem. You got the field, so they're ambushing up. Their prize is being surgically torn apart. Slaughtered. Like he's some sort of victim for Hannibal Lecter. And with this, he's just annihilated. There's nothing left here for Price. He's dead in the water. He's deader than Disco. And there you go, Price renders an absolutely spectacular win here by Joe in the end. Showing that while, you know, a lot of Pantrix can be, you know, potent, there's also counters to them. It seems again the KV apparently proving out to be quite useful against them. And all it's just good tactics, you know, bolts that can't as well. They certainly also bring to you quite helpfully for Jove. And all it's just, you know, good maneuvering the battlefield and good flanking. Though again, Price really, I think, also does some good work with the Storm in the end. You sort of think, like, you know, might just back it up there. And, you know, you should upgrade the Stoogs and... You know, you just close the pocket when you can. It's really good when set off correctly. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. Hope you learned something from it. If you did, subscribe, like, share, comment, honor, tell your friends, tell your family, but don't tell your enemies. And if you like what you do, you can donate or pledge on Patreon. Every little bit helps me to keep doing these videos after day after day after day. I try to do this for a living, so do try and support me. This is Imperial Links and Cheers, and see you all tomorrow for another episode. Bye.